Day three. I've had three days of pretty good weather. Day three starting with rain, but that was what I anticipated for most of the walk. Oh. So we're making our way down into Glenmalure. It's quite a sort of long, slow, gradual decline, descent down into the valley, and then the inevitable ascent out of the valley. We're starting a bit earlier today, actually. 10 o'clock. <laughs> I've three cups of coffee in me. Two. Nothing like an amazing view to raise the spirits. Amazing waterfall. Glenmalear Valley. It's windy, blowing a gale. That's what we have to walk up after we get the glamour there. Kind of like up that and then around there. So it's actually been raining fairly heavily and I'm just wearing this wee running jacket, it's basically a really thin soft shell, the soft shell trousers and honestly it's way more comfortable than wearing my waterproof jacket. It's just, it just feels ugh, claustrophobic in it. So even in fairly heavy rain, I think I'm definitely still, I used to say, you know, light drizzle all day, fine, but I think actually even in heavier rain I'll be happier in this. And so we've just come out of Glenmalure Valley, which I think it might be called Drum Golf or something actually. Anyway, um, where the Glenmalure Lodge was, um, they were very pleasant and let us use the bathroom. And now we're going to be making our way up uh, out of the Glenmalure Valley, and it's going to be some pretty steep trails to get up and over that. But ready for it? It's a beautiful wee river. Or two rivers come and meet in as one. Halfway marker. There's a tree fell situation. I totally feel for Ash O'Brien out in the PCT when she was doing it. Would have had not just like 20 mile hikes to do, but uh, navigate all this kind of stuff. Uh. So this is a really big obstacle, relatively, it could cause injury, a bit risky. Um, but navigating around it looks almost impossible too, because it seems like these trees are just domino from the very, very top all the way down. That's the easiest bit of it. And the worst is yet to come. Obviously you can't see where the trail is and you're putting foot in branches and hoping to support your weight so I'm with rucksacks on. So yeah, it's pretty I would say it's dangerous. Or 
maybe they're doing exactly the same we were doing. <laughs> There's not mat like the drop sort of slopes off gradually and knew that the path existed underneath that certain level here. So we're being very, very cautious, but that was I would definitely not recommend most people doing that at all. Um, and I don't know if there's a place where the Wicklow Way you can update things like that. I can see some hikers up ahead, but I can definitely see forestry. So I don't think that's a storm that's taking those trees down. I think it's forestry of like busy cut them all down by swathes and they're gonna come back and then deep branch them and chop them. Well did not expect that. Fair play to Ash O'Brien and the PCT too and all all what she did. Fair play, respect respect us too. Oh this one a cool adventure. <laughs> said there's dry clothes in the house. <laughs> the house being on my back. There's dry clothes in my rucksack. Look at the house. A wee break in the rain, which is glorious. Mm. And then it looks like we're gonna be going up over this saddle, if you can see, yeah, in between, I think up here, there. Um, looks like a pretty gnarly climb. Looks like the equivalent of juice from the other day, so we'll be getting the walking poles out for that one. But essentially that is all the hard climbing, so we're in day four, halfway through, not even, but um, <clears throat> it'll be halfway through probably by the time we get to the top of that, and then that's all the main climbing of the way done. And then it should be descending down into the lowlands for road sections mostly. But then the weather's kind of meant to be like overcast mostly and um, misly rain mostly, some heavier rain but mostly misly rain. Um, which considering the weather we got for the past three days, we've done really well. Um, and I'm pretty comfortable actually hiking it in this. Like, I've, you know, there's that tendency to want to put on a waterproof jacket and it just does not work for me as well. And I actually feel that whole thing they keep saying, damp but comfortable. Um, and these things will dry, you know, far quicker than even my waterproof jacket the other day. It got wet, and still it was damp. You know, a day later, still don't know what that's about. Probably the water repellency impeding its ability to actually dry out. Maybe, but there you go. Oh. Here she comes, walking down the street. She gets the funniest looks from everyone she meets. She's just trying to be friendly. People say I'm all getting around. She's too busy saying, put anybody down. So update is we must have missed uh, some marker or something. Now we've been strictly following the yellow man. And, but somehow we ended up on military road before we should have ended up military road. Um, but I was like, fuck it. Um, instead of hiking back uphill to get onto the main trail and walk around the side of like, Sleep Man, maybe, we decided just to continue on along Military Road. It's going to come out at the same point and join up with the Wicklow Way again. So it's rainy. You can say it's miserable. Anyway, here we are, trudging up Military Road on the Wicklow Way, day four. Soaked. Wet feet, whatever. So yes, I've resorted to the waterproof jacket, but only because it's windproof. Um, while we're hiking and wearing the thin windproof layers and that, um, it's been fine. But the rain has really picked up and we're getting the, a pass, like a mountain pass. Um, and the wind is blowing, th like just, it's incredible. We've come and in, ducked into this woodland just to get a wee bit of shelter. Uh, but even at that, as soon as I sat down and just got some food into me, it was like, pff, just feel a chill. So even just putting this neck gaiter on and just trapping some of that heat from getting lost up this way. Waterproof jacket on, not for the waterproofness, I'm so through anyway, but for the windproofness. 
Um, I don't want to put another insulative layer on because I don't want to get them wet and then mess that up for camp later. So we both got some food into us, a uh, bit of a break for morale, slightly sheltered from the madness out there. Um, and hopefully now we're now we're at the top of this pass. Hopefully uh, it's going to be. At least we're on the downhill on this military road. Which is, and now I've got my waterproof jacket on. Now I've got my waterproof jacket on and the buff that's stopping that heat loss through my neck. Um, definitely warming up, sitting in the forest there, getting a chill, cool. Ah, it's a stinky day. We're beaten, but we're not broken. Summer in Ireland, it's cracker. I've got my sun cream in my pocket for me nose. Just here and here and here. As you know, the sun can get through those clouds. You know. Same. Muffler hut approaches, I think. It's not really far enough along in a trail for the want to camp at it. The weather's been terrible, but um, if it looks like there's a let up, if I get enough reception, I know there's a let up in the weather and it's going to improve this afternoon. You know, the desire would be to push on, but um, if it's forecast to stay like this, I would probably prefer to take the shelter of the Muckle Hut and just bask in the haven that it would be. But I'm aware there's now four hikers ahead of us and, um, and possibly others coming the other direction too that might want to use it. So if we did use it, it would be as a shelter, not as like what we did in Brusher's Gap Hut where we had the tent in our inside. <laughs> That was a luxury, and we only did that because we knew there was nobody else coming, and the other people that were there had a tent up already and were using it. So. Right, we made it to Muckla Hut, this is the last of the mountain huts in the Wicklow Way. Um, and I say the last part, our road section, so it can be tricky finding. Well done! Well done you, well done us, well done bodies that have carried us through. Uh, the main thing is, it is empty. <laughs> And I reckon the other hikers probably pushed on ahead and wanted to stop here, but um, I need a break. I want to just reassess things, get wet socks off, dry the feet out, just sit down, and hopefully there's enough internet signal to get information that might help us make decisions. i say this is kind of the end of the upland mountain section and down into the lowland, into the prairies. Um, so yeah, we'll just assess where we're at and where we're going and how we're going to get there. Look at those epic trees. It's hanging with moss. Got a bit of resp respite in the Mukla hut. Um, I switched out socks, not that that made any difference because they're just done already. Um, had to start moving because as soon as it st stopped moving, you could feel it chill again. And yes, this is the end of July <laughs> in the summertime. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to push on, try and knock out eight miles and get... Well, I think the plan is basically if we can get to... Uh, Kyle Farmhouse B&B &B or uh, b, b we might actually just stay there, dry out stuff and lift our spirits, morale and um, just have a breather before the last push of the end, I think, because the idea of camping with all the whack gear in some random spot <laughs> uh, is not that appealing. We'll see, we'll see, we'll try and crack out some more bounds. It is. This is going to take us down towards the road to Moyle. 
humanity, <laughs> to civilization, <laughs> to the opportunity of potentially having a room and being able to dry stuff out. Such novelty. Mm. So we have just come up through a piece of a wee lane through some woodland. Really takes on a, a tarmac path, uh, which is I'm thankful for. Um, like at the minute, sometimes it's just times of the day and weather. I don't know whether it's like something to do with your eating food or whether you're a wee bit dehydrated. But sometimes earlier on, I was like kicking out these big ascents, steep inclines, and then the past hour. These little gradual ascents are killing me. <laughs> so I'm glad to see this. Um, again, this is like taking us towards Moyne. I think the wee bridge we crossed, there's Gorgeous River. I think it's Iron Bridge, I think, maybe. Um, anyway, there's a wee Iron Bridge, the Good Cross River. Um, um, would have actually been quite a pleasant camp spot, probably, at some point. Uh, but on the flat, no, I'm thankful for it. Whoa. At least it's not blowing a gale and it's not pissing out the heavens. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> well, life looks pretty. So, emergency resources. We've gone into this hiking poles and well, sandals with <laughs> waterproof socks. They're sodden anyway, or feel sodden through. They may not be feel soaked through anyway. And, but um, actually, it's more comfortable than um, more comfortable than wearing the shoes. And actually, I've only got about two stones in the sandals the past two miles or three miles. But I was dead earlier i was such going up the hills so so slowly and there was way more to go and oh gee i felt broken and i got the walking poles out and total new life they're just they make a difference i'm a total convert now I totally make a difference um but i didn't put my wee quick deploy system that come with the osprey I, like i came up with my own one just using bungees and toggles and i didn't switch it off the other rucksack onto this one but having them ready to just pull out whenever you need them put away when you don't that is a big difference because if they're stashed on the back of your pack it's easy to not just be lazy and just go oh, just now can be bothered getting them off but geez they made such a difference i was i'd be miserable now i'm borderline miserable like <laughs> but it'd be absolute utter miserable right now if i didn't have the walking poles so we're soaked through, that's still the situation. Christina's gone into the sock sandal combo. Um, I am hoping for guest house solution, bed and breakfast. Um, but we're waiting to get signal to be able to find phone numbers and all that malarkey. So hopefully we can sort that out. Hopefully we get a lift or something to one of the B&Bs. Um, or camp here. This wee woodland is quite nice actually, but and there's a wee water source there, but we'll, we'll see. My my desire is for bed and breakfast, some heat, um, and get some of these wet clothes dried out. <laughs> I think we've actually got out of the clouds and the wet, because I think that's what we were actually experiencing. Oh, this could be tracked though, a wee skinny trail down towards mine. Oh, that's just, even this, like the view clearing slightly you know slightly less wet <laughs> windy that's enough to lift the spirits <laughs> so it's like i think it's this thing where the the stuff that sucks really hard makes the stuff that sucks ordinarily less sucky something like that so you actually are kind of thankful for the really really sucky bits like going over that high pass, mountain pass on a military road in those conditions made even the lighter rain afterwards be a blessing. <laughs> it's all comparative. <sighs> I feel like I can breathe again, I feel like I'm not up against it just for a moment or two at least. So we were 
kind of walking winded. We're just soaked through and not really enjoying it. And da, 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 da. Um, not sure of any camping options and all that. Um, and we probably could have camped in one of the woods there, but it wasn't going to be enjoyable. Everything's wet. Um, so we just decided to get on the phone to Kyle Farmhouse Bed and Breakfast. And with not knowing whether there'd be any places available and we didn't even have the energy to even walk to it. It was, <laughs> I think we just didn't even have that. Um, so phoned him up and Margaret um, was taking some guests down to Tenahili for dinner. Um, but sent her husband out to pick us up and we weren't even in the area that we thought we were in phoned her back and said we're not in Moyne she said I know he's been there <laughs> um, and so then she sent him further along and they, they found us well obviously it's easy to find us we're sitting there like drenched wearing waterproof socks and sandals and just picked us up and he was lovely and just chatting away about you know the local community here and how he's actually spent time in the north of Ireland in the Moyne Mountains and like exploring he does loves his walking as well it's, it's just brilliant what a lovely embrace uh, just being picked up and whizzed up here and we just took whatever we could get that we could afford and we could afford this and we didn't realise it's actually a little cottage to ourselves um, with his own wee set up with, and you can hear Christina's in the power shard like delighted um, oh it's better and there's breakfast provided in the morning and like I never splash out like it's it's only recently that I've maybe occasionally gone and stayed in an Airbnb and it was always seemed like a, like a massive luxury that was something I just would never do. Um, so even staying in Dublin overnight and staying in a, like a hotel of sorts or, and staying in somewhere like this, just allowing it to happen. And also I used to spend all my money in the bar. So the fact that I've enough enough money to be able to just go, yeah, okay. It's a hundred pound. We're going to be taken away from this, you know, wet miserableness and allow ourselves to get heated up and dry it out and have power sockets and all those little things we take for granted. Like, even the fact there's a little bin here, I could put a tissue in. It was like, oh my God, a bin. <laughs> um, and this is, this, yeah, this is lovely. No regrets. Um, we're still still hoping to walk the Wicklow way basically um, and we just had to figure out between us you know like are we willing to put an extra day in and you know we've seen people do this in five days but you know we just weren't on schedule for that for various reasons and um, we were doing 20 kilometer days not 20 mile days um, having said that I don't think I would want to do 20 mile days to be honest and I think there's so many amazing places that are worth lingering through. I don't know. I'll do some video about that after the walk, after the hike. But for now, just enjoying this view. The rain has stopped. I'm going to enjoy a coffee. And enjoy sleeping in a bed. Oh yes, the adventure continues and this is part of it. This is our Wicklow way, not the Wicklow way. One of the things that has been actually quite magical, even in this weather, is like just watching these clouds wisp over the hills. It's nicer whenever you're underneath it, looking at it like this, <laughs> than up in it. Oh. What an adventure. Clean, unclean, gonna get cleaned. <laughs> very, very cleaned. Get the water into every nook and cranny. <laughs> This is our home for the night. Little cottage all to ourselves. And then a 
that's the main bed and breakfast and then a lot of people choose to camp so they have a field that uh, people camp in so most people are camping um, so and then Margaret takes people down to Tenehealy for dinner <laughs> and Hugh the husband he's, he's the one that came and picked us up but we've, we'll get breakfast in the morning and they've even offered to dry our clothes or our wet clothes for us sanctuary um, it's a business but there's a kindness to it as well love it this is your breakfast spread and Margaret has pulled out all the stops so there's porridge already made there and even has vegan stuff like Alvaro yogurt look at all this what a legend scavenging breakfast supplies I've now got cheese sarnies for the trail we just not want that repurposing cling film from the fruit bowl noise noise So we had a wonderful stay at the Kyle House Bed and Breakfast, Kyle Farmhouse Bed and Breakfast. Um, I'm a bit groggy with luxury, having toilets and a cosy bed, and just had our breakfast and all. But ready to get going, uh, we'll be walking for about eight hours today, which is kind of what we have been, eight to nine hours a day. Um, gonna go to go off trail to Tenehealy because it's a main hub and it's got shop and convenience store or whatever um, and those are kind of few and far between um, so I think we'll just go there take the hit get anything we need for the last day of the trail and hopefully end up at the Dying Cow pub where they have spaces to for people to set up their tents and camp so that's the kind of plan but it's a trail it's an adventure everything has a winging element to it as well but here we go May the road rise to meet us. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm just going to go. I want to go back in here. <laughs> Big thanks to Margaret and Hugh. Legends. And also like for any of you weird vegans out there that like me. That, um, Margaret provided like vegan cheese and actually was able to make a wee sandwich, a wee sneaky sandwich um, for the trail. Um, she had porridge, um, there was fruit bowl, um, there was toast, she had, you know, margarines rather than butters, all the things you can serve, especially anyone that's dairy free on the trails, anywhere, just traveling in general on the countryside of places. It'd be so hard even just getting butter or like margarines for toast. Um, not that I'm promoting margarines as a healthy option whatsoever, but um, but it's just nice whenever you're staying somewhere knowing you've got that for breakfast. <sighs> More beans juice. Jeez, orange juice is like crack cocaine. Ah, here we go. Oh, we're going the right way. Yeah. Check them out. Right, eight hours walking.